All right, guys, welcome back to part two. If you haven't watched part one, linked right up here, this will make absolutely no sense. Um, you won't know, well, it won't make no sense, but uh, it'll make less sense. Watch part one first. Most importantly to watch my disclaimer of, um, is this gonna seem overly complicated? Yes, so watch that disclaimer and make sure, do you actually wanna have a deeper understanding of things? Do you wanna learn things? Do you wanna learn things for the right reasons? Nice and uh, do things for uh, your gaining knowledge and just being a better, more efficient, uh, deeper understanding trainee, not to yell at other people. Um, so again, watch that first because if you just say, I'm gonna keep watching because I wanna know about bands on a barbell bench press, you're gonna get into this and say, this is so complicated, this doesn't make any difference for actually producing results. Why does anybody do this? This is a waste of time, just go bench press like Ronnie. Um, then yeah, that's not the point of these videos. And you're right, you can just get huge not knowing any of this stuff, but this is for the people that wanna know about this stuff. So in the first video I said, using something with bands where basically you have a lot of this stacking effect occur. That's the short answer I actually didn't talk about in the first one as well too. On any pressing exercises where you have a line of force and the moment arm being very long, so the line of force has moved far away from the train joint, the moment arm is very long to where at the, that's at the bottom, to at the top, the line of force actually passes through the train joint and the moment arm is smaller non-existence. Those are the exercises where banding um, and chains, any kind of accommodating resistance really make the most sense. So I did dumbbell chest press in this example of that. There are other ones, um, any type of pressing for upper body, generally where it's more of a kind of a close grippy type thing, um, where again, your hand can actually finish if we're talking free weights. So most pressing for free weight stuff, um, is where it finishes basically where the line of force from that passes right through the shoulder joint are gonna be good examples of where banding and accommodating resistance chains all properly set up make sense for making that exercise more efficient. So also close grip presses are in that category. Um, JM press is in that category. Dips, depending on how you do them, but for almost any time dips are in that category. Um, and now I'm gonna explain why a barbell is in that category, but not as much and depends on how you do it. So I'm gonna nerd out here. So we're gonna, again, I broke down two sides here. Um, I actually did use my trusty marker here just to have a standard length. So for this, I just made their upper arm and their lower arm the same length. Doesn't really matter. Obviously people have all different limb lengths and ratios, but I wanna do that from the top to bottom. Um, so again, I'm kind of keeping this accurate. So this is more of what I would consider, I just said obviously a close grip press would make a lot of sense um, you know, for having a, a pretty good amount of uh, band tension or chain tension for a lot of accommodating resistance, a larger percentage of the total load. Um, well, for a bodybuilding style, which isn't obviously the only reason to do this, but if the goal is a little bit more chest, so instead of doing something that's kind of tucked at the bottom to right over top, you know, you're doing something either from a relatively high elbow position or even tucked down a little bit, just where you have a wider grip. So if your grip's wider, if you haven't figured it out on a barbell, your hand basically, again, if we're looking from the top and the line of force from that, they can't get any closer together. So no matter how you do it, if you're out here, even if you drop down low and you press up high, at the top, your hand, if we drew a line straight down from your hand, which isn't always the direction of the line of force, that's where that gets complicated, um, is never gonna be stacked over your shoulder joint. So if you're doing more of a uh, press with a wider grip in any way, shape, or form, um, I consider again more of a chest, bodybuilding chest press, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So if I draw the line of force down through both of these, you'll find out real fast, the moment arm if the line of force from that barbell was always straight down, again, we're looking at the train joint here, the main train joint here is gonna be uh, the shoulder joint, that moment arm doesn't change top to bottom. So let's, so hopefully that makes sense. So again, here's the line of force basically from the, uh, the point of contact with the barbell straight down through your hand. If, if it was straight down, it would look something like this. And so the moment arm is going to be this length. Oops, I wanna do that blue. Let's not make things too complicated. So the moment arm would be this long. Doesn't matter how long, we don't actually have to measure. Now if we do, well, how long is the moment arm from this? So line of force, hands are gonna be the same distance apart at the bottom that they are at the top. Hopefully that makes sense. There's the same line of force, gonna be in the same relative position. Moment arm is the same length. So if it's basically the same amount of torque through the entire range of motion, for the most part, obviously the hands stay the same distance, that line of force is the same distance, why would you use chains here? So again, this is where technique actually makes a little bit of a difference. What you're focusing on makes a little bit of a difference. If you're pressing and you're a bodybuilder and you're intentionally trying to limit tricep involvement as much as possible, you'll never keep it all the way out no matter what. If you're going to max effort, your triceps will be involved in some way, shape or form, which is the main reason why I think some banding here to some amount 
still makes sense. It's just going to be much smaller. Um, but if you're a bodybuilder and you're intentionally trying not to use your triceps as much, then uh, the torque at your shoulder joint stays much more consistent compared to someone that just wants to use everything. So if your goal, and there's nothing wrong with using everything, if your goal is to get as much weight from here to here, then you want to use chest. I'm, I'm neglecting to say front delt, but obviously front delt is involved in managing that shoulder joint as well too. And you're trying to use triceps. So not only are you driving as hard as you can with pecs and front delts, you're also actively contracting and trying to contract those triceps as hard as possible. So I said in the beginning, if you didn't catch it, the line of force here, this is gonna make a head hurt for a minute, but it should make sense hopefully if I explain it decently, is not always straight up and down because the, the, only, the, the main force here, the main force will always be just force basically is expressed by this barbell onto your hand as a result of gravity, but that's not the only force. And so again, someone's saying, how is that possible? Whatever, well, imagine you're doing a barbell press and if that barbell was made of ice, would your form change? If you realize, obviously, whatever directions you're pressing this way on the handle in any way, shape, or form produces force if your hand doesn't move. So if it was made of ice and you actually slid this way, there wouldn't be any additional directions of force in this whole little equation or drawing or graph or whatever the hell this is that I'm gonna do. But since your hand stays fixed on the bar, there is some additional force always produced from friction. And so we're gonna look at friction here, and specifically as it is at the top. So, because again, you can be at the bottom position here, it's more likely that you can actually keep the most of that load straight down, but as you come out to the top, and especially as things are contracting, there's gonna be much more, again, because this is not directly, the reason, sorry, I wanna clarify the difference, if the hand is right over the elbow, like in this position, basically, obviously, you could have um, that perfectly balanced. This could be made of ice, and there isn't any of this going on. As you come to the top, if this was made of ice, you know, if you're not balanced here, you go here, your hands are just gonna slide out. So if your hand is unmoving, Basically, when we come to the top, so there's a line of force. I'm going to erase this in a second, but there's the line of force from gravity here. This is the larger line of force, so we'll always have a way, way bigger influence here. But as you contract your triceps here as well, so this really comes from, obviously, this exercise is also a bit of a closed chain exercise. And so what I mean by closed chain exercise as well, too, is this is why I said if you're going to max effort and you're trying to get that bar finishing up, your triceps are going to be involved in some way, shape, or form. It's literally impossible to keep them out of it. Um, because again, at max effort, even if your focus is I want my chest to fail first, if you're really trying to finish that movement, your triceps are always going to work to a certain degree. And I don't need EMG to prove that, but you, you could actually easily prove that with EMG. There's never a time, and even just as anecdotal, if you look at somebody pressing, you're never going to see just this flaccid, flapping tricep there. If someone's going max effort, look at any bodybuilder, any video ever, the triceps are always involved. So again, if your triceps are involved, what are they doing? They are extending the elbow. So again, what does elbow extension do? So even as we're coming to the top, the whole time there is force going this way, right? So didn't just imagine, see if I can draw this without making it too ugly. What a, if we took the hand off of the bar and we imagine here, elbow extension, things go this way. So if I'm extending this way, you're trying to move things that way. Does that make sense? If my tricep goes from here to here, elbow extensions, whether they're actually, you can actively see it or not, but obviously going from bent to here, the elbow is extending and elbow extensions are producing force all the way to lockout. So if we look at this position and we know that your tricep is producing force this way, but your hand is not moving on the bar, then basically whatever amount of force you're producing this way, the bar is giving you back in the form of friction force this way. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, if I'm trying to slide again, imagine the bar is made of ice and I'm coming to the top, my, tricep, my triceps are extending and if the bar is made of ice and I contracted my triceps as hard as possible, I would just go, I would slide that way. But as I'm coming to the top, they're not moving even though I'm extending as hard as I can. So you're gonna be getting some force back that prevents your hand from moving. Let me draw that on here with the red one. So you are driving force this way. You are going to get force back that way. All right, does that make sense? And I'm kind of drawing those arrows in a way that reflect the amount of force. So if I've got 200 pounds on the bar here, this isn't gonna be anywhere near 200 pounds. So your triceps are producing a lot of work, but this is gonna be the biggest influence on these. So what you do when you have two lines of force, you combine them to have a resultant, and we can see what the actual result of those two, result, resultant, result of those two actually does to the real line of force that is acting in this. So when I'm at the bottom, this is the real line of force because those elbows are stacked. So that's the line of force. When I'm at the top, I have to combine these two. So if you combine these two, this one's straight down, this one's pointing just a little bit this way. What really happens is it starts to move a little bit more that direction. So it might look a little bit more like this. Does that make sense to everybody? That's where I might lose somebody a little bit. You're combining the barbell force, which is still straight down. So at the bottom here, 
This is the line of force because your hand is stacked right over your elbow. You could actually be balanced on a bar of ice there. If you eat, we don't even have to have a tricep to actually have that part really moving at that point in time. So this is the line of force straight down. When we come to the top, because of friction, because of contracting your triceps hard, you are driving a lot of force extending that way. So again, if your hand doesn't move, something has to prevent your hand from moving. It is a force in the opposite direction, which again is this little arrow here. So again, we combine these two, which is a lot this way, a little bit of this way, so we get a diagonal line that way. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And so what do we have going on here? Well, we can see if we were just doing a bench press where things are straight up and down, I said that moment arm thing doesn't change. What do we have going on in this one? So again, first and foremost, the moment arm is always where that line of force is closest to the joint or a 90 degree angle. So now I have this is the moment arm as I come to the top, if you're using your triceps a good amount. And here is the moment arm at the bottom. It's gonna look the exact same as it is over here. So what does that mean? Hopefully if you watch the dumbbell video, you don't have to know the exact numbers on these things. But obviously, if we're looking at torque at the joint, you're gonna have way more torque at the joint at the bottom, the shoulder joint particularly, and you're gonna have way less torque at the shoulder joint at the top. And if that's the case, meaning, again, you're stronger in this position, and this should make sense on a barbell, right? Same thing, if I gave you a weight and said, if you could move it for here for six inches, or for here for six inches, and that's your whole range of motion. I'm not talking about, there's a different thing that actually says, people say, well, my lockout strength is weird. There's a component of fatigue there as well too. But if I just said, pick a weight and move here for six inches, you know, bottom to top, obviously controlled, could you do more weight like that? Or could you do more weight like this? And the reality is everybody could do more weight, maybe not as crazy of a difference again as a dumbbell, but you could do more weight here. And again, that is the main reason is this line of force doesn't stay straight up and down. It actually gets closer to the shoulder joint at the bottom. So you have um, less torque expression as you are at the top of the bench press motion. And so as a result, the same theory with a dumbbell is um, because you are stronger at the top position, this would be a place where things like bands and chains can still make sense. Now the difference here is intent does matter. Um, and it matters as the set goes on as well too. And intent means a thing that bodybuilders will do. So again, if I'm actively going like this the whole time, so maybe I'm actively trying to push my hands together, does that change this? Yes. If I'm actively from the start of the set trying to use my triceps as much as possible, so again, if I'm using my triceps as much as pos possible, this is pretty long. If I'm intentionally trying to use my triceps less, this is going to be shorter. So intent does matter. So in reality, this example I gave here would probably be what it would look like if someone was trying to use their triceps a lot. If someone was intentionally trying to do more chest and limit their tricep involvement, the line of force might actually look more like this. So sign of somewhere kind of in the middle. And this is where I would say where most bodybuilders would kind of fall. They're intentionally trying to use less chest, but they're still, excuse me, they're intentionally trying to use less tricep, um, but there is still gonna be tricep involved no matter what. And what does the line of force look like there? So you gotta do a 90 degree-ish angle. So 90 degree, right about there. So the moment arm is not as short as here. It's a little bit longer, but still not as long at the bottom. And that's why I say, so if the torque is much more similar through the entire range of motion, but there's still less torque at the top. So again, this line of force is based off the hand position at the top. So we're talking top of the range of motion on these. This is the only one where I'm talking about, um, you know, when we're looking at it at the bottom as it is right here. Um, then that would make sense to use bands, but probably less. So again, that's why I say for most barbell pressing stuff, so this could be flat barbell bench press, incline barbell bench press, even on a Smith machine or something like that. Um, bands, I think, do make sense, but the take home message is you probably want less resistance change from the bottom to the top compared to, again, what you would do with a dumbbell press. So just making up numbers, uh, if we're looking at the same person for same relative strength, they might wanna do a band, a heavier band for a dumbbell press that makes the change, you know, 30, like the example I gave for the first video, 30 pounds lighter at the bottom, 30 pounds heavier at the top. And, and I'm talking each hand, so obviously that might be uh, a 60 pound difference to the top, where if I'm looking for someone with a similar level of strength and they're looking at a barbell now, maybe, and I'm kind of making up these numbers, you know, they might wanna only have a 20 pound difference from top to bottom. So it doesn't make as much sense to have super heavy bands or super heavy chains when you're doing most barbell stuff. If you're intentionally trying to use chest more and limit triceps. Now, if you're um, a power lifter, power builder, whatever, where your main concern is strength and you're intentionally using triceps a lot, 
then it's probably not gonna change as much. Then it's probably gonna be pretty similar on both exercises and you're gonna have that big torque difference from top to bottom. And so I think that honestly is why a lot of power lifters and strength athletes will use heavier chains, heavier bands when they're doing pressing movements because that line of force stays more like this is a little bit more horizontal and a little bit less vertical than you might see with a bodybuilder. And in case you're new here, the last thing I'll wrap up with this video is um, some of this too does depend, if things are a little bit different from person to person, yes, your intent, again, how you're pressing into the bar, whether you're doing more of this, more of this, trying to use more chest, whatever, intent does change things. Um, so the best way to gauge this still too is your failure rep uh, speed, bar speed. So I always say if you want a decent gauge, look at your failure reps. And if you're trying 10 out of 10 as hard as you can, which it's not a failure rep if you're not, the bar pat, the bar speed should be pretty much the same the entire range of motion. Whereas again, if you're, it's hard, 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 pop to the top, then that would be an indication that maybe you do need a heavier band or a band if you're not using a band. So again, the whole point of bands as well too, because speed does play a, a factor in force production, intramuscular force production, and arguably slower grinder reps are more stimulus. Um, then that's the thing that I look at more than anything as well too. So some, that's why I kind of give made up numbers because someone's taking notes at home and saying, all right, 30 pound different from the top to the bottom with bands or 60 pound with bands when I'm doing a dumbbell and 30 pounds or 20 pounds when I'm doing a barbell. Don't take notes on the exact numbers I'm making up. Basically, it's gonna be a heavier band makes more sense with dumbbells, slightly lighter band makes more sense with a barbell, unless again, you're trying to use your triceps as much as you can. Um, but again, it, if you wanna really get people that are advanced, which is really where this makes sense, or if you're just a nerd and following along, um, looking at how you actually perform working sets is still always the best gauge to figure out exactly how much resistance should you have coming from a band. Or the same thing, if you have bands on and you're doing a barbell press and you can actually get out of the bottom and then you get stuck and you have a hard time finishing the top, then odds are you have too much band resistance on. You have too much of a change from top to bottom. Make it a little bit lighter, have not as much of a change. So that is the barbell. The last one I'll go over will be converging press and that will be in the last video. Um, and again, actually will be a little bit of a shorter video, surprisingly, even though that's the one that confuses the most people.